This equity audit is an interdisciplinary synthesis of the dimensions of culturally responsive pedagogy and the degrees of implementation in implementation science. Let's begin with culturally responsive pedagogy. The dimensions consist of the institutional, the instructional, and the personal. However, I've created the individual for alliteration's sake. The institutional is place-based and community-aware. It considers the physical and political structures of the history of your school and school district. The responsibilities here include the allocation of resources and implementing policy. We think systemically. The instructional consists of a humanizing pedagogy whereby we focus on developing critical thinking skills. The tools of instruction will match the students lived experience. Here we think relationally and historically. And finally, the individual. This is critical reflexivity or self-location work that considers our own inherent bias, privilege, and positionality. This work is very difficult and slow. However, there is an urgency in the field. This work requires an abundant amount of grace and authentic caring. We think introspectively. The degrees of implementation consist of policy, practice, and performance. The policy is a recorded theory of change, essentially what makes it to paper, what gets codified, what theoretical frameworks and research back up your policies. Practice is also the process. Personnel can be counted. This is the expressed or active theory of change. These are the budgets, calendars, and billable hours that can be documented in our practice. And finally, performance. These are the actual results or the benefits to your end user. We collect much data in our day and age. The question is, how is that utilized? In synthesizing the theoretical frameworks, the equity audit was established with nine areas for consideration. Often, equity work consists of self-reflexivity, whereby a trainer may be brought in to consider this practice. However, have we thought about the readiness? Who's already doing the work? How is the trainer selected? Will there be ongoing coaching? And finally, is it budgeted and calendared for the future? Often walls go up, and potentially we do more harm than good. When we consider what policy supports this individual practice of critical self-reflexivity, we must base it in theoretical research. What research has your school or district done to support this very arduous and personal work? What common language and common expectations have been set for this work? And finally, what will be measured in the individual performance of critical self-reflexivity? How do we measure our social cultural consciousness? How do we measure the attitudes of our educators? The individual policy will inform the practice and ultimate performance of this column. Let's jump to another. Let us consider the institutional policy whereby we set forth the framework for engaging our communities, allocating resources, and making decisions based on data. Is your school trauma-informed or healing-informed? Combing through policy, such as your equity, discipline, ELL, and special education, is also an important part of this area. Teacher quality, including the selection of your teacher base, are critical to examine. Institutional practice consists of the measures in programmatic equity, proportional representation, and the use of universal screeners to engage student voice. For instance, how are students selected for AP or IB programs at the secondary level? The traditional measures will be used for institutional performance. In addition, per pupil expenditures, proportional representation, and teacher quality are also fine measures. When we look to the instructional policy, we must focus on identity and dignity of students and staff. 
The practice of historicizing and humanizing will allow for critical thinking. Consideration of theoretical frameworks from critical race theory, ethnic studies, such as intersectionality and funds of knowledge, should inform your policy. Restorative practice and social-emotional learning curriculum should also in be included here. The focus on instructional practice is student-centered, narrative-based, whereby students focus on their agency. The materials and strategies should match the student's lived experience. Harnessing the cultural capital, aspirational, familial, linguistic, and navigational capital should also be based in place, whereby students examine where they come from and where they are. And finally, the instructional performance. What are the evidence and artifacts of the student's lived experience in their work they produce? How do we measure student involvement? How about student and teacher consciousness? Traditional measures will also be used. The goal of this equity audit is to be a usable tool for school leaders and practitioners to examine policies, practice, and performance in the institutional, instructional, and individual dimensions.